this is just a video on this EXP recluse clutch that I put on my Harley Davidson 2020 uh, tri-glide and I'll just uh, recap some of the advantages of owning one and some of the disadvantages of owning one and then I'll take you out and we'll find some traffic lights and we'll do some stop and goes so I can show you uh, how the clutch uh, works and then I'll just show you some of my lifelong shifting methods. Okay, so what is a recluse clutch and what can it do? Well, when you're decelerating, like coming up to a stop signal or something, when uh, RPMs reach about 1,350 RPMs, now these numbers are my own observations, when your uh, RPMs reach about 1,350 RPMs, your clutch begins to disengage. And when it reaches 1,150 RPMs, your clutch is totally uh, disengaged. It's as if somebody was slowly pulling the clutch in for you. Now you can still operate the uh, hand lever manually, the clutch lever manually if you want to, but there's no need to because it's automatically done down there. Now when you're accelerating and your uh, RPMs reach about 1,350 RPMs, then uh, your clutch begins to engage. And when it reaches about 1,700 RPMs, your uh, clutch is totally uh, engaged as if somebody was slowly letting the clutch lever out and engaging uh, the clutch. Uh, so now uh, we're just going to go on a motorcycle ride and uh, hopefully we'll hit some stop lights and I'll be able to show you uh, what this recluse clutch is capable of doing. All right, we're going to go for a ride and I'm going to talk to you about this recluse clutch and I'm going to show you what uh, this recluse clutch can do. But first we're going to look at these gauges. I want you to, we'll be paying attention to the RPM gauge right there. And we'll also be paying attention to the uh, miles per hour gauge. And we'll also be paying attention to the gear indicator age uh, gauge. Uh, it's about six miles of downtown and hopefully we can catch some red lights. Okay, this is my method how I shift the gears with the clutch. I call it the uh, 10% method or the clutch assist method. When I'm in first gear and I am going to shift to second, I'll pull that clutch in 10% or the clutch assist method and slide it into second gear. What that does is pushes the clutch rod in and it separates some of the plates. So now I'm in second gear and I go to third, same thing, 10% method. And then from third to fourth, there's the same method. All right, here we go. And from first to second, second to third, and third to fourth, I'll use that little 10% method. 10%, 10%, and 10%. That works really good. Okay, we got a red light coming up. Keep an eye on the tachometer and the speedometer. When that tachometer hits 1150 RPMs, I'm going to shift down. There it is. To fourth gear to third gear, to second gear, to first gear. All without me even touching that clutch lever whatsoever. As long as I got you at the stoplight, I might as well uh, tell you about this uh, oh, car play. Let's put that car play up. I like that car play. There it is, it popped up there. Yeah, I like car play. Uh, I, I ask Siri all kinds of questions all the time. Spokane population is about uh, 250,000 and the surrounding area is about 250,000. I'm just gassing and going. Okay, we're coming up on another uh, red light. Keep an eye on the tachometer and this speedometer. There it is, fourth, third, second and first all without using the clutch never touch the clutch this is a uh, francis and division intersection the most accidents in the city of spokane happen right here at this intersection might mention that the speed limit is 35 miles an hour uh, out there where i started is 45 but down to 35 and then in town it's uh, 25. okay so uh, let's talk a little bit about the advantages of uh, having a recluse clutch. 
First off is uh, no more stalling. No more uh, killing the engine uh, at the stoplight like this and uh, letting the clutch out too fast, engine dying because uh, it's always, uh, the clutch is always in when you're stopped. Okay, I'm just gassing and going. Okay, we're coming up on a stoplight. Keep an eye on that tack. I'm in fifth. Okay, it's fourth, third, second, and I'm still doing 13 mile an hour and first gear. Again, all done without even touching the clutch. Some of the other uh, advantages of having the recluse clutch is the eliminates the Harley clunk. Like normally right now, I'd be sitting, uh, I would have popped it in neutral and just sit here uh, with the clutch uh, uh, disengaged. And then as soon as the uh, light turned red, I'd pull the clutch lever in and put her down in first gear with that big old clunk and uh, take off. Well, in this case, uh, like I say, it's right now, it's in first gear and the clutch is disengaged and all I have to do is just give it gas. Like right now, I'm just gonna give her gas and take off. Okay, we got another red light. Keep an eye on the tachometer. As soon as you hit 1150, I'm shifting down. There it is, fourth, third, second, and first. And I'm still rolling at seven miles an hour, six, five, and stopping. Another uh, advantage of having that recluse clutch is uh, I've reduced my clutch pull about, I'm serious, 80%. I'm just gonna gas and go. Yeah, 80%, I hardly use the clutch at all. One thing I want to show you is that if you are stopped at a stoplight and uh, you pull the clutch lever in, uh, you'll be able to rev your engine up uh, like a normal clutch would act. Uh, but then if you let the clutch lever out and uh, you touch the throttle, the clutch will engage and you will take off. Okay, I got the bike idling now and it's in neutral. Uh, I'm gonna put it in first gear. I'm gonna just without using the clutch uh, lever. And uh, now if I give it gas, she'll start to take off like that. But if I pull the clutch lever in, uh, then gas it, she'll rev up with no problem. And I'm gonna let the clutch lever back out. And then again, if I uh, give it gas, she's gonna wanna roll. So she's just starting to engage. Okay, another red light. Keep it on the clutch. I'm in fourth gear. So when it's 1150, I'm shifting down. There it is. Fourth to third to second to first. All right, let's talk a little bit about the uh, disadvantages of having this thing. No more push starts. Can't push start the bike and start on compression anymore. Uh, like I say, it's, the clutch is totally disengaged when the engine shut off and when you're stopped. So no more compression starting. And, uh, another thing is you can't uh, leave it in gear to hold your bike. Uh, a lot of guys uh, put it in first gear to keep the bike from rolling. If you got a recluse clutch, uh, that, you can't do that no more. Okay, another red light. Keep an eye on the tachometer. So as she hits 11.50, I'm shifting down. There it is, fourth, third, second, and first. And uh, the, so, you, so you can't uh, put it in gear to hold your bike from rolling. So they give you, a, on a two-wheel bike, they give you a cinch strap. I got one with mine, but I have a tri-glide, so I have a park brake, so I don't need it. But they give you a cinch strap to put around the front brake lever. You pull the front brake lever tight, and you put the cinch strap around it. Uh, like this, right here. Maybe I'll gonna show you right here. And this is the, the cinch strap supplied by uh, Recluse clutch. It's more for a two-wheel motorcycle because the tri-glides have uh, park brakes already But you just uh, apply the front brake and then you cinch it down and it acts as a park brake uh, because uh, 
when you stop the motorcycle the clutch is disengaged and you can push the motorcycle around so therefore you can't depend upon the uh, first gear anymore to uh, hold your bike in place and it also uh, because uh, it's disengaged while the engine's off you cannot uh, compression start the bike anymore all right another red light keep an eye on the tachometer and the uh, speedometer and the gear indicator so we're sitting 1150 I'm down third second and first we'll just continue to go with the flow here uh, I've been riding bikes for about 50 years now and uh, I'm just not used to uh, I'm always pulling that clutch in since I got the recluse clutch recluse clutch I uh, find myself pulling the clutch in when I first got it uh, when I didn't need to and, but now I'm getting pretty much used to it. Okay, okay so you're kind of knowing what I'm doing when I'm getting these red lights and shifting down. It's getting to the point now where I, uh, I just can hear the engine sound and I know it's below that 1150 and so I just shift down automatically anymore. I'm in the parking lot here and I'm gonna make some tight turns to show you what this recluse clutch can do. But what I'll do is I'll take my left hand off the left handlebar controls so I won't be touching the clutch lever. And also I will use my right hand here to just control the throttle. And I will use my brake lever down there to uh, control my speed because uh, this parking lot is uphill All right, so uh, let's go First thing I'll do is make a hard left turn here And I'll come to a stop right here Stopping then uh, I'll give it some gas and take off again Now most guys will feather their clutch to control their speed in these type of turns, but with the, the recluse clutch, uh, it's not necessary. So that makes it very easy to maneuver in uh, tight spaces such as parking lots, driveways, residential streets also makes it uh, very easy to make u-turns uh, any u-turn and also u-turns uh, on uh, two-lane blacktop and also uh, you can't stall the engine anymore by accidentally popping the clutch and killing the engine or lugging the engine uh, down uh, to low rpms and upward uh, kills the engine Boy, you get to see all kinds of red lights here. Okay. There it is, 11, fourth, third, second, and first. And I'm still rolling and stopping now. Okay, another red light. We'll watch attack. And there it is, sixth, fifth, fourth, third, second, first. And I'm still rolling, and I'm stopping. Sometimes the light will t turn green, like let's just say I'm shifted down to second, and uh, the light will go green, we'll all just power through in second gear. Okay, I wanna talk to you about that uh, little uh, recluse clutch creep. When you do a cold start on your engine, uh, because it's fuel injected, uh, it idles a little high, and in my case, uh, 1,250 uh, RPMs, and then it takes about three minutes to get down to normal idle, which is uh, 960 uh, RPMs. And normally, I'd just wait till it got down to 960, and it's time to go, so I wouldn't even touch the clutch, and I just, because it's a recluse clutch, and it's disengaged, uh, I would just 
put it in first gear and uh, gas, uh, gas and go. But if for some reason you didn't want to wait for the normal idle to get down to 960 and still at 1250 and you wanted to take off, that's when that little creep comes around. So what happens is it's idling about 1250 and it's time for you to go and you're not going to touch the clutch because you think it's disengaged. So you hit it, hit the first gear and it, it will bang and you will start creeping along. Uh, almost kind of shock you for a second. So it tends to just uh, creep along. Now the other method is uh, it's 1250 RPM. You can use it like a normal clutch, pull the clutch in, uh, put it in first gear, and uh, then you can gas and go uh, with a normal clutch uh, operation. So now I'm gonna go out and do a uh, cold start and show you what that little creep looks like. Okay, we're gonna do a cold start. Even though it's uh, 90 degrees out right now, it's still considered a cold start because I uh, haven't had the bike started all day. So uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll start the bike and she should idle around uh, 1,250 uh, RPMs. You know, again, it takes about three minutes to come down to uh, 960 RPMs. So it'll idle about uh, 1,250 uh, RPMs and uh, I have to have the bike in neutral to start it. And uh, we'll see if that little creep shows up. It's in neutral. It's idling about uh, 1300 RPMs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put both hands up. And normally, if the bike's uh, warm, uh, when I put it in first gear, nothing will happen. I'll just stay right here. But since it's uh, all the parts are starting to warm up, and it's not completely warmed up, this is where that little creep comes in. So here we go. Uh, watch. Here we go. Ready? See, she's creeping away on me. All right, off in the sunset I go. I'm back. Okay, on the cold start, uh, it's better just to uh, let the idle come down to about 960 RPMs and take off if you can, but if you're in a hurry, uh, you can just use the manual clutch, just pull the clutch in like that and uh, put her in gear like so, and uh, that will eliminate the cold start uh, creep. So, okay, this is a warm start when your bike's already warmed up and idling at, mine's idling at about uh, 930 RPMs. And so when it's warm, you don't have an issue with the creep because it's warm, all the parts are warmed up, functioning properly. So this is what it's like uh, on a warm engine when you stick it in first gear. There's absolutely nothing. I'm not going anywhere, no creep. Beautiful, just beautiful. Okay, I think I told you everything uh, I knowed. And I think I covered everything that I wanted to cover. But one thing I think I was a little light on explaining was uh, you can use your clutch the normal way. Uh, you're stopped at a stoplight and you want to pull the clutch in and rev your bike up, whatever you want to do. And then it's time to go. You can gas and, uh, and let the clutch out and go. And I, I definitely use mine uh, shifting from uh, first to second, uh, second to third, and uh, third to fourth, and so forth. So the question uh, begs to be answered, uh, why would somebody buy a recluse clutch? Um, after all, the cost is uh, pretty high, uh, and this is about what they cost right here. And, uh, and this is what it costs to have it installed. And so this would be the overall cost right here. Uh, one of the reasons uh, I bought one was because I was just getting tired of uh, pulling the clutch lever in all the time. And uh, on these uh, touring bikes, the clutch lever is a little harder than on normal bikes. They're a little tougher to pull in. And, uh, and I was starting, my hand was starting to get uh, a little weaker. I could feel it. And so I'll add all those factors up and I just decided, well, it was time for me to, to buy a recluse clutch. 
So there you have it, and this is the, the end of the video. So I'm just going to uh, head out there and go uh, do some more riding this evening. It's still really nice out there. So, okay.